Now we're going to get into the BR11 triangle. And this is my layout that I have numbered in the book. And as you can see, there's quite a few pieces. There's 33, actually. And there's really no clear path of assembly as you first look at this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble these three pieces here as one row. But then if you look at this, from the, if you take that out of the mix, and if you look at this, it's kind of like an on-point quilt with a lot of pieces. And that's how I'm going to assemble it. So if, if you look at this, this is the corner. So I'm going to do 18, 19, and 28 as a row with 21 as a unit. So this is going to be a unit. This little line up is going to be a unit. And then these are all going to be together in a row. And then you're going to have to end up treating this as a unit because this is where the line is. So 6, 8, 14, 23 and 24, but 24 goes into 22. So I'm, and this is going to be interesting to assemble. So we'll get, we'll break this down. And then I've got the tip pieces one through four. So as before, I've got my pieces laid out. But when I went to go lay my pieces out, I was missing one, which happens, which is why I keep the fabric and everything until I'm done with my block. So this is white because this is the piece I was, I missed. So I went and grabbed some more fabric and made a piece out of note card paper, um, double layered note card paper. So this is my number five with my arrow for directional. And I didn't bother with my BR11 or my dot, but that's why that's white. So, like I said, I'm going to be doing this in an on point quilt kind of thing. And my basting, I'm going to do as I go. So with my squares, of course, I'm going to do you know, opposite sides and opposite sides, but the one that I'm going to have that's crispest is probably going to be this one, which means it's the first one I'm going to do. My rectangles, I always do the short side first, then the long sides, and then the weird triangles we'll have to get to as we go. So I'm going to get started with my assembly, and the first thing I'm going to do is assemble this very, very top row with pieces 31, 32, and 33, and I'm gonna treat this like a rectangle. I'm gonna do my short sides first, then my long sides on both of these pieces, and then the same with this as well, short side, and then my long side, which ensures that I have a better crisp edge. So I'm gonna to get to my basting. I got my top row basted. I've done the top and the bottom little sides here, and then I did the outside edge before the inside edge so that I can have my tags going away from these intersections. So I'm going to attach these to the end of this big long piece. So I've got this top row assembled. I'm going to set this aside and now I'm going to move into this section. So I'm going to base these. I'm going to base this first and then these so the tags go out. Same thing here. I'll base this first and then these. And then for this I will um, base these and then this, so the tags go away. Um, and I will do this opposite side. So let me get these four pieces basted. So I've got my next section basted. I'm gonna baste a piece, well in this case two, so that I can connect them as I go. And then I'll baste one and attach it as I go. I wanna make sure that when I attach this, I make that this is one continuous line here and then I have to watch my angle as I go down. So I will take my book and I will actually line this up to my book before I start stitching. So when I do my scotch tape, I will make sure that my pieces are in the right position. But for this section here, these three pieces, I wanna make sure that this line is nice and straight. So I've got this basted. I basted this with the hypotenuse first and then these so that the tags go out. And then I attached this to my square. So I've got this nice straight line here and now I am going to base this one and I'm going to base these two pieces first before that one so that everything goes away from this seam. So let me base and attach this piece. So I basted and attached my other piece and I made sure that when I attached it I was real careful about lining this up here and here. So I'm going to set this aside and the next section I'm going to work on 
this is the next row, this little bitty row here. But I think I'm going to work on it in conjunction with this row too because they're so little. So I'll attach them. But because um, these are really, really tiny. I think I'm going to attach these in pairs. And then this, not this one, but these. So these I'm going to attach to each other. So that these little basting ones can get attached to a bigger piece so they're easier to handle. So I'll get going with that. So I basted these two pieces and I'm going to connect these two here. And that's what I'm going to do as I go down. I'll, I will baste two and then connect them so I don't lose my directional and I don't lose where they are. So like these two are nice and small so that way they'll stay together. And then as I baste these two, once these are connected I'll attach them here so I'll work my way down here and then I'll worry about these five when I get there so I've got these connected to each other and then I've basted and connected these two pieces so I'm going to attach this to here and most likely I'm going to base this and attach it so I don't have to worry about where that goes I've basted my upper corner here and I did the outside section first and then this hypotenuse so that the tags are going away from this seam. So I've got this whole thing as a unit and then I've got this section. So now I'm going to go down here and baste these two and connect them. These are now attached and I will attach them to my other corner piece here. So I've attached these to this corner and so now we're starting to see this shape up and I've basted these next two little pieces. One thing I wanted to point out that I didn't mention when I did this one is when you baste this you're going to lose your directional marking. So what I do before I attach it is I will make sure that it's going the right direction because I've got my directional fabric and this is you know such a small representation but it does matter so um, if I have it turned 90 degrees then it just doesn't look right. So I want to make sure that I've got it the right direction and then I can attach it. And this is the right side and that's the wrong side. So I'm going to flip this back over. And um, that's, that's not right either. So let me flip this over to the correct side and then I'll tape it here so that I know it's going to go together correctly. Because this is going to be... This is going to be here. So if I take this and flip this here, let's lay this out because that's the only way you're going to do this. See, I was about to put it on the wrong side of the square. So this goes here and this actually goes on this side. So I will tape it like that. So just, you know, verify before you attach because it's a lot easier to do that than to have to take it out and redo it. But worth to take out and redo it if you do mess it up. So. I'm going to get this whole section together and then I can deal with these three pieces next. So I've attached my edge and so now I've got this row going quite well. Everything's going the same direction. Now I'm going to deal with these three pieces here. What we're going to do is I'm going to baste this and this and I'm going to, I'm going to do this side and this side first for this. And then I'm going to do this side and then this side. Um, and then these, of course, the short sides and then the long sides. So I'm going to attach these to each other. And then I'm going to base this guy and attach it to them. Because you only got these. That little bit is what's going to be attached to this. And so this will be a three-piece unit that I can then attach to here. So I've got these two basted and connected. And I've basted my little top piece here. So I'm just going to connect this to this, and then I'll have this unit ready to go to attach to this second row. So I've attached my unit of three pieces to the row. So that completes that section, and then we're going to go on to the next section. So next I'm going to be doing this section here. I'm going to attach these two pieces. And then I can attach it here. It's similar to how I ended over here on this row. So then I'll have this three-piece unit. And then I'll make this three-piece unit. And then attach it to this one. 
And then we're going to attach these two together I'm going to put it here and then we're going to put these two together and put it here this makes this whole row so then we can attach it to these other two and then i can do the tip after that so i'm going to get started up here i'm going to baste this first and then these two so my tags go away from the center and then these are like basted just like i basted these over here So this corner piece has now been assembled and that's ready to go and I've basted these three and I just got to attach these so that I can then put it onto there. So now both sections are connected to each other and so we've got this um, little piece and the next thing to do would be to baste and connect these two to each other to connect to this. So I've got these two pieces attached to my other unit. So this is what we've got so far. And next would be these two pieces and that will finish this section. So I will baste these and attach them to themselves and then put it onto that. So I've got these two pieces basted and sewn together. I debated about how to baste the triangle. I decided to do the legs first and then the hypotenuse. I'm going to get any I'm going to get um, issues with my tags no matter what I do. So these are going to clash here. But if I put them down, that they're going to clash up here. So that's just a matter of whatever you want to do. And uh, so I'm going to attach this to this piece to have this section done. So this is attached to this whole unit, and that completes this row. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach these three together to make this section and then I can put this on here so that I can consolidate all this before I then go and assemble the tip section. So these first two pieces are attached to each other and now just to add this one, make sure as you're adding that you're paying attention to your angle and if you're not quite sure, lay it on your triangle so that you can see what it's supposed to be. But I just, I've been, uh, honestly been eyeballing it. But you want to make sure that this lines up into a nice, nice straight line as you're attaching it. Now with the third piece attached, I've got the main body all completed. Just a matter of putting this base on. And then the tip, which has gotten all distorted. But the tip, i got to assemble after that. So let me stick this on. Actually, it will go this way. And then I can get to that. So I've attached this base part. So now I have an almost completed triangle. And I have these four pieces. So I'm going to base these. I'm going to do the short sides first. And then I'll do the long sides. This one, I'm going to baste this first. And then these two. So that I don't have to worry about the tags going into these two triangles. These I'm going to base the outsides first so that my tags go out. But this is going to assemble my um, tip and I will put these two together first. So I've got these two basted and attached to each other. So the next part would be to put number two on right here. So I'm going to do this and we'll base this, base this side first and then this. And then I will attach it to here, making sure that this lines up directly with this so that it's in one line. So I have attached my piece number two, and I just need to attach the next piece, which is the last piece of the tip. So this is what you should have at this point. And I will attach this, and this section will fill this hole, and then just make sure that my lines, my angles line up properly on the edge. So I've attached my fourth piece to my tip. So now it's just a matter of taking the tip and attaching it to everything else. And that will be my last seam right there. So I have completed the last seam on my triangle. And now I have a complete BR11 triangle.